Thank you uh, for letting me into this room. It's very crowded outside. Um, it's a great honor to be stand inside. Um, so uh, I will uh, talk about a consulting job I did. Um, first, about some words about me. I did my PhD in computational physics a long time ago. I uh, was involved in projects like Minix for 68K, uh, the mathematics library for uh, Linux, I did the high precision math, um, Paul Python uh, porting to the Psion 5, uh, flight gear, uh, flight simulator, did some contributions, and I'm a maintainer for the MSKT util, it's an Active Directory Kerberos integration tool. <coughs> Right now, uh, um, for the moment, I am uh, the PM, uh, PMC of the Apache Victor project. More about that later. Um, in my real life, the other world life, I am a software architect for connected e-bikes. And the thing I was t uh, t I'm talking about is how uh, to so uh, how to um, attack a problem uh, when uh, you do some have to do some consulting jobs and with a big data label on it. Uh, and the problem w uh, I had to solve was uh, from chem informatics. You have uh, for the um, uh, development of medical drugs. So the um, problem at hand is you have a database a large database of um, molecules which can be ma uh, produced quite cheaply, for instance, and you uh, have this medi uh, medical database, um, database of uh, things, uh, is written down, for instance, in the SMILES notation. That's uh, a complicated uh, notation to, uh, that's uh, the, the um, chemical structure of this thing here, I didn't remember the name of it. it. Just I just picked randomly one out of, out of it. And the problem is to look for substructures into these uh, molecules which have some healthy um, can make you healthy or something like that. So there, that's not a new problem. There's a commercial solution for it. You have near you. Uh, throw an enterprise database in it and you have something like a cartridge in it and you can make a SQL query and you get results. Um, the problem uh, is that is, uh, the duration is very uh, long. For instance, it needs about a day or something. It's not very reliable and it's very expensive. So. Um, the customer looked out for a big data approach to this problem and fortunately there is an open source project called, called RDKit. Uh, it's a beautiful library for chem informatics and you can do something like that. You read in a molecule from SMILES and you put in the SMILES notification and you have your molecule object, a Python object and you can say, simply say has a substructure match from the other small notation. So it gives you true or false. That's fine. And okay, uh, so that's uh, always the same th thing. We have uh, uh, the ingredients, a time consuming job. Uh, we have a large data set and make it fast. So, and we have an, uh, the environment uh, we wanted to use uh, is a big data cluster or an AP HPC cluster. We have both. So what we can, can we do? So uh, now about talking how not to scale out. Um, you can simply benchmark it and see that the reading in of the small notation and constructing the molecule object is the most time consuming thing uh, in this whole uh, um, problem. And OK, we can simply read it uh, in one time and uh, dumping the um, Serializing the molecules is called pickling in C uh, in Python. So you can dump it to a, to a file, as though you do not have to reconstruct all the molecules at any time. So that's a huge gain in runtime, but it does not scale anything. It's, uh, we have we are looking out for scale. So to, uh, in order to make the program faster, throwing more machines in it. So. Um, we uh, simply looking at the problem. It's uh, simply an HP uh, EP problem. It's embarrassingly parallel. 
So we can uh, simply divide the database into uh, small chunks and throw each chunks at different machines. Quite easy. And uh, the big data approach is to distribute the algorithm to the machines and not the data coming to one machine. So, um, yes, and the beautiful uh, framework for us is the Spark. Um, it's the Spark core, no special ingredients needed. And we uh, use the RDD paradigm, that's resilient data uh, distribution. Uh, uh, think it's called, uh, that's, it's that the um, files are um, hacked into uh, different components so we can distribute it to all the machines. And Spark is beautiful because it runs all, uh, each on HPC and big data and environments. It does not need, it's not, it's not tied to the uh, HDFS for instance. So, um, all I did is read the instructions at Spark. I never it haven't used Spark before, and uh, it's, it's quite easy. Uh, we read in an, a text file. Okay, uh, in, in fact, I'm reading in the pickled file, but uh, forget about it. Um, text file. I have the input, and I can um, distribute the algorithm. That's the algorithm here, the, the function to the cluster and, and do some aggregation in order to get benchmarking results. That's all. All I have to do, as it's, uh, if I remember uh, about constructing an uh, MPI job and thinking what I have to do with all the uh, initialization and uh, it isn't fail-safe. This is inherently fail-safe because Spark handles if a node is crashing or, or had misbehaving or something like that. And only relies on that every node can read that file. Uh, so if, you have, if I have some kind of shared file system, I can distribute it and run it in the environment. So uh, HPC mode is quite straightforward. Uh, use a cluster for, uh, file system, dump the, uh, the um, Spark uh, jar on it, uh, distribute the data in the same directory, and okay, it does not use the locality of data store, but this is CPU bound, not uh, data bound. And we can use a standalone mode of uh, Spark. And okay, let's compare about with the big data setup. Um, okay, um, I have to, uh, to make some um, advertisement for the uh, Apache Victor distribution. And only one minute left. Okay. <laughs> Oh yes. Um, okay, the big, uh, Apache BigTop is a Debian of big data distributions. It's reused by Google, Cloudera, uh, Canonical, and the UDPI. Please turn around, Roman. And uh, it, it contains all the usual stuff. And it's important to have a compiler uh, environment. We have repositories. We have provisioning with Docker Compose for testing, of course. Uh, the OpenStack is broken now, sorry. Uh, the uh, had deployment te uh, templates based on Puppet, orchestration, if one needs to, uh, likes to have it, it's Juju Charms, that's the canonical thing. We have an automatic, t t uh, automatic testing environment and we have non-Intel architectures. And uh, that's a glimpse uh, for our CI compile system, that's the distributions. The Linux distribution center is SEC 7, 6, uh, Debian, Fedora, Fedoria on PowerPC, and Ubuntu on uh, ARM64, and that's uh, like uh, something like um, uh, Hadoop, Giraffe, um, uh, Hive, and something like that. That's all these big data ecosystem. And it's simply, uh, we're simply deploying it with the Puppet scripts, use the HDFS, put the data into it, use the yarn mode with Spark, and unpack the Spark 2, because we do not support it until now, and run. Okay, it works. Uh, preview of BigTop 1.2 is we will have Spark 2, uh, but unfortunately it's not finished until now, and we need more help. Please join us at BigTop Apache Org. So, uh, let me conclude. <laughs> um, the problem runs much better on the HPC environment because it's compute intensive, not uh, data pipeline. B that's simply the cause the big data environment is uh, optimized for throughput, data throughput, not for HPC runtime. So, 
Uh, and the problem it scales really well. It's o for, uh, over n, but unfortunately, if we have that's the number of uh, machines we put in, and we have some runtime, the total runtime I'm waiting for the job. Uh, that's the commercial solution because it's, it's a fixed environment, and our n is, and that one is too much for the customer to pay. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we will have to investigate. Uh, somehow, have, uh, someone has to investigate how well the uh, where we can speed up it much better. Thanks. Thanks. So much. Any questions? One question.